this workflow, I actually want to show you a different approach. We can go in there and create a blueprint like we did for the ceiling light. And that would have the benefit that we can actually just drag and drop it into the scene as, op uh, as often as we want to. But the cool approach with our new um, component based system is that you actually can just um, add it to any actor in the scene. And for this example, I want to do that. So I just select a scene here in the world. And here I have the possibility to add new components. For example, I can add my highlight component and set it to uh, to my mesh that it actually works with the quest. And now you can see that this is already working, although it's not a blueprint, it's only an actor in the scene. And I can add other components. For example, I want to have a selection menu, so I can add the select component select. And I select my selection menu here. And for the types, I want to have my visual exchange. And if I want to change something with the visual exchange here, I need to add the visual component visual to it. And this is the old uh, material component. But you can not only change the material as we did in the previous tutorials, but you can also go in there and change the static meshes. And we haven't done that in the last tutorial, so we do it today. It's basically the same workflow. First of all, we want to set a current material. Let's say this is the white. And as I already told you, these names are just placeholders. You can name it any way you want. So you can also uh, name it. This is the setting one, setting two, setting three. In this case, let's start with the setting white and let's define the setting white. So we also choose white here. Let's open it up. And the first thing is that we have this button material and a button texture. So we can drop a material on the actual button, on the selection button, or we can drop a texture. We don't have a texture right now. So I went in there and just created a simple screenshot from the mesh. You can see it here. So this is just a screenshot of this mesh and the other one is this mesh here. So I just went in there and did a, uh, did a quick screenshot and saved it. So let's import both of those textures. And let's select the plant again, our component visual and the one, so the white, this is this mesh here. So this is plant one in our case. Let's drop it on the bottom texture. And if we would try this now, we should already see that the highlighting is working. If we press, we can see that we have this material exchange here. And there's this one texture we just assigned. It doesn't have any functionality right now, so nothing happens there. But you can see here's the picture. So let's open it up again. And for the mesh info, we create a new element. And there we need this mesh key again. So we select our static mesh. Scroll all the way down to the text, component text and give this a tag. For example, this is our plant. And this works just like in the last tutorial. So you can define, if you have multiple meshes here, you can define different tags for them. And then this would only work on the tags associated here. So let's use this plant one and open this up. And now we can define material, skeletal mesh or static mesh. In our case, we want to, find, uh, want to define the static mesh. So let's select the same mesh. It's the, this one here. Let's select it here in static mesh. 
So now we have basically made the setting for this plant and we want to make another one for this one so we can actually exchange to them. So let's crawl this down, add a new element and it's basically the same workflow. So we select another color in this case, let's use black. Open this up, use this other texture. So let's go back to the texture. The other plant is this texture here. So use this for the button texture. Open up the mesh info. The tag is again the plant because it's the same mesh we want to change. And the actual plant is, let's use this one here. And go back to our component visual and set it as static mesh. And this is everything we need to do in order for this to work. So let's try it out. Highlighting is working. Both of the plants are here. And now if we press it, actually, there's one thing I forgot to mention. And we will get an error now saying that this only works with meshes that are not static. In this case, this plant is static. And in order for it to work, we have to set it to movable. So let's do this and try again. And now you can see that everything is working the way you would expect to. There's a little issue with the light map on this plant right now. This is because we have um, built the lighting before we set it to movable. In the if we do the next uh, light baking, this will not get any light baking information because it's movable. It will only get information from the volumetric lighting. So this error won't be there in the next update. But you can see now we can just switch around both of them and just close it. And as this is just an actor, we can just duplicate it here, delete this one and put this mesh in here. We can even scale it up a little bit and rotate it, something like this. And if we want to have another starting mesh, both of them are right now the same. We can also go into our component visual and say that our current material is not a white one, but a black one. Let's update it. And now you can see this is the mesh associated with the black key and the other one is associated with our white key and both of them have the same functionality so we can actually click on them and cycle through both of them and you can add as many plants as you want there okay so the, this was a very um basic way of adding this. I wanted to show you how you can add it to actors in the actual scene that you don't really need to have a blueprint for something simple like this. We will do the next in the next tutorial for the floor to actually change the floor material or, or with something like the pillows in there. We can do the actual same thing.